If you are getting stressed, try and purify your intention. The purity of intention can easily be brought about by this technique that Lord Krishna presented 5000 years ago, which is the most powerful technique of stress management, the technique of Karma Yoga. And what is Karma Yoga? What does that mean? means you are doing your difficult works, whether it is raising children, handling your boss, your subordinate, your colleague, and yet you don't have any anger, greed, hatred, ego, envy in the mind. The mind is in yoga. The mind is in God. How will you do that? You do your work and also think of Sri Krishna? There's a simple way to do that. We have been discussing the art and science of work and we also touched upon the theme that spirituality does not mean giving up work. Why did Lord Krishna speak the Bhagavad Gita in the battleground? Some people will say, you know, because Arjun was in ignorance. That is why he had to speak. That was only a Leela. Arjun was the avatar of Nar and Narayan. Nar. He was a Siddh Mahapurush, a realized saint. That is why before the Mahabharat, when Arjun came to take the help of Sri Krishna, at that time, Duryodhan also landed up. They both reached when Shri Krishna was sleeping. Shri Krishna is Leela Dhari. Maybe he was pretending to sleep. Arjun, out of his humbleness, took a place close to Shri Krishna's feet, and Duryodhan stood close to his head. So when Shri Krishna opened his eyes, oh, Arjun, you are here. So Duryodhan said, I am also here. <laughs> okay, okay, you are also there. <laughs> what is the matter? What brings you both here? Now they express themselves that the battle of Mahabharata has become inevitable and it's going to be such a battle because they were both powerful groups of princes that this battle would impact all of Bharatvarsh, India at that time and all the little, little kingdoms and hamlets would be forced to align themselves with one or the other party of the cousins. So they had come to solicit Sri Krishna's help. Sri Krishna said, you are both my cousins. So I will not be partial. I will offer a choice on one side I will be there, but I will not lift weapons. And on the other side will be my entire one Akshohini Yadu army. I give the choice to Arjun because I saw him first. Arjun, what do you choose? Arjun said, I choose you. This is no choice at all. Duryodhan jumped three feet into the air. He went back delighted. Usko buddhu bana diya. Now you ask Arjun, why did you choose Sri Krishna? Do you want to do his puja on the battleground? No, no, no. If Sri Krishna is on my side, I will definitely win. Arjun is in full knowledge. He knows. And yet when the battle is about to begin, the armies have lined up and the whistle is about to blow. Begin! At that time, Arjun says, Shri Krishna pulled my chariot in between and when he was pulled there, he looks and says, Oh, I have got my relatives on that side, I will not fight. Why? If I fight, then they will be killed. 
then if they are killed their wives will become widows and if that happens they'll be unwanted progeny and i will be responsible i'll go to hell now you ask arjun that before the war began did you not know who is on the other side <laughs> i was well aware did you not know that in the war you are supposed to kill them <laughs> that also i knew did you not know that if you kill them their wives will become widows that also i knew then why did you not say i will not fight earlier on this is like our side witness who goes into the testimonial box in the court and changes the arjun's falling in ignorance was inspired by shri krishna himself he turned the key now i need you to fall in ignorance because then you will ask questions and i will answer them that question answer will be frozen for eternity and offered to all the souls to come as the means for wisdom so shri krishna did not speak the bhagavad gita for arjun he spoke the bhagavad gita for us why did he choose the battleground to convey the message this is something very confusing why did he have to speak on the battleground the message he was trying to convey was that even in this situation you can practice spirituality this is the worst situation of the dimension realm of maya the material world the worst situation is the battleground it can't get worse than that if in that situation also you can be spiritual then nobody in the 21st century can make excuses so i mean ji i am an engineer i am a doctor i am an advocate i am an accountant how will i do bhakti shri krishna says bachu when arjun did bhakti then you can also do bhakti no excuses so the bhagavad gita is teaching us that science of work yogina karma kurvanti sangam tyaktva and sangam tyaktva is the solution to your stress don't be attached and we also discussed how not to be attached offer the work to god the moment there is stress it means your intention is not pure you are not doing it for the pleasure of god the moment you are doing it for the pleasure of god you are free from stress i'll give you an example you know before i started coming to usa i used to travel all over india for 10 and a half 11 months preaching in different city states So in India it's a different paradigm. You book a football field and fill the whole town with posters, banners, hoardings. I had a team of about 6-7 dedicated boys. Samarpit. They used to go in advance to a city and paint the whole city with the posters, flyers and the tent would be constructed. But when you go to a new city there is no guarantee that the program will succeed. So the leader of my team was a young dynamic boy. When the program would fail, he would start crying. He would actually cry. I would say, "Why are you crying?" "Oh, I tried so hard and people did not come." That is the proof that you were not doing it for the pleasure of God. you were doing the samarpan offering the fruits to yourself the purity of intention is required you do this for the pleasure of god after your best efforts if the results don't come are bhagwan ki yahi ichha hogi who cares let me move on god has given all these parameters inside you if you are getting stressed try and purify your intention and how do you purify your intention i am not saying okay stop stealing and that is basic things 
i am saying purify your intention to this point that you do every work for the pleasure of god that is karma yoga and the moment your mind is attached to god it is detached from the world simple कबीरा मनुआ एक है भावे जहां लगाय भावे हरि की भक्ति कर भावे विषय कमाय देर इज वन माइंड इज अ टेक इट हियर और टेक इट दर सो श्री कृष्ण से इज अर्जुन अटैच योर माइंड टू मी अलोन That is where the purity of intention comes. Sarveshu kaleshu ma manusmara yudhya cha. You are a kshatriya. You have your duty. Carry on doing your duty. Carry on fighting yudhya cha. But ma manusmara. Always think of me. So the karma yogi has to keep the mind always in God. That is the perfection where we have to reach one day. But if our attachment is in God alone, Swamiji, that means we should not even be attached to the relatives. So the question arises: If I am not attached to relatives, how will I take care of them? This doubt arises naturally. The fact is. if you are attached that is the cause why the duty gets distorted see the mother is attached to the child the child is not well the doctor has said there is a indigestion don't give your child anything heavy and the child is saying oh, mummy ice cream Mother says, "Beta, doctor has said no ice creams. Oh, I want ice cream." Mummy says, "Beta, I am not able to see your crying. All right, all right. Take the ice cream, but when Papa comes, don't tell him." <laughs> Now, mummy gave ice cream in that indigestion state. The situation became serious. Why did the mother fail in doing her duty? because there was attachment if a nurse had been in the same situation she would have said i will do what is best for the child what the doctor has advised that is what i will do see why do children get spoiled we used to hear this story as a child there was a widowed mother <coughs> she had her only child who was 5 years old the child one day Walking in the ma- bazaar, he stole a pencil and brought it home. The mother saw it. The mother kept quiet. She did not do her duty. The mother's duty is to train the child with reward and punishment. The child has done something good, reward. The child has done something bad, punish. Even the tiniest punishment. Don't look at the child. Whatever. there must be a signal of punishment that is how you train the child you know i sometimes see children making their parents dance my devotee is in maryland because i was staying in his house i was seeing the 3 year old making his mother dance beta it is time to eat okay 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 i said look what are you doing the child did not follow your instructions and you said okay 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 the child got a lift now he knows he has a weapon to control his mother why were you not able to do your duty because of attachment so this is what the mother did she did not punish the child the child got this lift next day he stole two pencils then he stole five pencils until he became a confirmed thief and when he grew up his thieving became more and more dangerous and adventurous until as a young adult finally he did the unthinkable he committed murder to steal he was caught and brought to court 
the judge said all the proof has come before me you will be given the capital punishment and hanged but before the hanging the death sentence the convict is given one chance any final desire ask and if it is possible the court will fulfill it so he said i wish to speak in my mother's ears he said fair enough they brought the widowed mother that man stooped to speak and he bit off his mother's ear everybody is horrified what a man is he he's eaten his mother's ear that man said this is all my mother's fault the first day when i stole that pencil if my mother had slapped me i would have never stolen anything ever again that is why the english saying used to be spare the rod and spoil the child but in america rods are not allowed right so only spoil the child <laughs> why parents are not able to do their duty is over attachment if you are detached you will do what is best for the child that is what the teacher does what does the teacher do the teacher is also doing what is best for the child and is not stressed at all one mother came to me she said swami ji i am totally stressed i said what happened you are not working why are you stressed i am not able to handle my child my child doesn't listen to me so i get stressed i said earlier on you were a teacher yes how many children were you handling in class 40 children you were handling 40 children were they all listening to you were they all shravan kumar no 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 they were not all listening to me so you were handling them and you were not stressed and this one child stresses you have you ever thought about it why is it that as a teacher you are not stressed and as a mother you are stressed were you a careless teacher no 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 i was getting the state prize for good teachers so obviously you were putting in your best effort you were not stressed because you were not attached you were just putting in your best efforts and why you get stressed in raising children is because you are attached so this detachment doesn't mean that you become less efficient detachment means your intellect becomes normal and you are able to do the best so the purity of intention can easily be brought about by this technique that lord krishna presented 5000 years ago which is the most powerful technique of stress management the technique of karma yoga and what is karma yoga very simple karma plus yog when you do karm and alongside remain in yog then you are a karma yogi what does that mean means you are doing your difficult works whether it is raising children handling your boss your subordinate your colleague whatever and yet you don't have any anger greed hatred ego envy in the mind the mind is in yog the mind is in god that is karma yog and shri krishna has set the highest bar he doesn't say okay just remember me sometimes some people say swami ji i am also karma yogi how come you are a karma yogi swami ji when i get up in the morning i do yog for half an hour I remember God in my puja room. Then after that, I close God in the cupboard, and then there is no God. I do what I like, char so bc chala ki makkari. But I did my karm and yoga, so I am karm yogi. Sri Krishna says, "This is not karm yoga. Karm yogi is that person who can be in yoga alongside with karm." 
if you can do this kind of multitasking this is the age of multitasking right i went to somebody's house and his college son had the tv on here and the book open here so i asked the father what is he doing he said swami ji children in america study like this with the tv on so this is the age of multitasking huh? so shri krishna also gave us an assignment for multitasking he said alongside with your work you keep me in your mind how will you do that you do your work and also think of shri krishna there is a simple way to do that just try and feel the presence of god now when you come to the temple you come before radha krishna everybody feels the presence of god it's natural you fold your hands you bow down why you're feeling the presence of god right so you go to the temple to feel the presence of god to be in the presence of god and when you go outside there is no god there is it true of course not the vedas say the whole world is the temple of god eko deva sarvabhuteshu guda sarvavyapi sarvabhutantaratma karma dhyaksha sarvaloka divasa sakshi cheta kevalo nirgunascha this whole world is the veritable form of god he is sarvavyapi he is all pervading so we need to upgrade our devotion the devotion is right now in front of the picture of god you feel devotional now upgrade even outside you feel devotional always feel the presence of god wherever you go try and realize that he is with you he is watching you and he is your protector when he is your protector then why fear marne wale ke do hath bachane wale ke char hath who is this four handed one he is vishnu who has got four hands he is sitting inside the paramatma so why fear so remember he is with you he is your protector and he is your witness and now add this to your consciousness so we are always conscious of the self i am i am i am this is the consciousness now you have to change this he is with me we are two i and my master i and my beloved lord the veda se dwa suparna sayuja sakhaya samanam vriksham parikhasvajate tayoranya pippalam swadvatya nashnan nanyo abhijak shiti this is a mantra you will find in the shvetashvatar upanishad and the mundok upanishad two upanishads having the same mantra this upanishad says there's a tree on the tree are two birds one bird is eating the fruit of the tree the other bird is just looking it's a friend of the first bird but the first bird doesn't know i've got a friend here and the first bird is busy eating the fruit sometimes it gets a sweet fruit it's joyous sometimes it gets a bitter fruit it's miserable usually there are bitter fruits if only the first bird can do a left about turn or a right about turn and come face to face with its friend all its problems will be solved what is the tree the tree is the body what are the birds the atma and the paramatma the paramatma is a friend of the atma they are both sitting in the heart the atma is busy eating the fruit the fruits of karmas in this body sometimes sweet sometimes bitter usually bitter and it has forgotten its friend so it is vimuk 
it needs to become sanmukh turn its face to its friends and all problems will be solved how do you turn your face to god by this technique of karma yoga when you always work in the presence of god and through the technique of karma yoga you will reach the ultimate purification of intention where you will start working for his pleasure and when you do that you will find that even though you work you don't have anger greed hatred envy and the disease of stress will dissolve and finish away but even then if you find stress rising you will understand there's a deficiency in my karma yoga yet i need to go higher in this way the stress itself will push you to greater and greater purity until you reach the ultimate purity where like dhruv prahlad ambarish prithu vibhishan you will do the most complicated works and still be free of stress because you have purified your intention